the Russian Air Force renamed the Vosdushno Kosmushiskai Sili VKS or Air and Space Forces in 2015 was meant to spearhead Russia's so-called special military operation in Ukraine. The Russian Air Force had a 10 to 1 advantage against Ukraine when the campaign started. It was thought that Russia would have full control of the skies in a few days and will be able to neutralize important military targets like Ukrainian command and control centers, as well as air defense systems. But to the surprise of the majority of the observers, the Russian Air Force has failed in this critical aspect. While the issue with the Russian frontline aircraft like Su-34 and limited stocks of precision-guided ammunition has been discussed, there's more to the story. A senior NATO official has pointed out the specific reason. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes what is the single biggest reason the Russian Air Force has been ineffective in Ukraine. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com defense or clicking the link in the description. Use the code DEFENSE at the checkout to get an extra month free for the two-year plan. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. It's estimated that 1,100 missiles that included Caliber KH-101 cruise missiles as well as Iskander-M ballistic missiles were fired in just the first 10 days of the war. The number of cruise and short-range ballistic missiles fired at Ukraine more than tripled by August, around 3,700. While a significant percentage of these are thought to have missed their targets, the extensive barrage should have been able to severely degrade Ukrainian air defenses or command centers. But this didn't work out like that since Ukraine had dispersed its assets and Russia was not able to gather proper data due to the lack of ISR capabilities. Air Marshal Johnny Stringer of the UK's Royal Air Force, who serves as Deputy Commander of NATO's Allied Air Command, offered the evaluation during a November 3rd speech on the war in Ukraine, hosted by the Royal United Services Institute, a UK defense and security think tank. He noted that Moscow has vastly inferior ISR-led strike capabilities compared to NATO and inadequate targeting processes to exploit intelligence data. ISR stands for Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance. The underperformance of Russia's ISR aircraft has been one of the key issues that have plagued the Russian campaign. He said, the transformation in US and NATO air power over the last five decades has no equivalent in the VKS, Russia's Air Force, nor do the Russians have anything like the ISR-led strike capabilities of NATO air forces, nor the targeting processes to exploit them. He added that multi-domain integration of NATO assets will continue to underpin how we fight, and suggested intelligence sharing by alliance members in support of Ukraine had reached an unprecedented level. ISR is the coordinated and integrated acquisition, processing, and provision of timely, accurate, relevant, coherent, and assured information and intelligence to support a commander's conduct of activities. Land, sea, air, and space platforms have critical ISR roles in supporting operations in general. By massing ISR assets, improved clarity and depth of knowledge can be established. ISR encompasses multiple activities related to the planning and operation of systems that collect, process, and disseminate data in support of current and future military operations. Some examples of information acquired by ISR assets include optical, radar or infrared images, and electronic signals. The means of acquiring this data include satellites as well as specialized aircraft systems.
Countries like the US and UK deploy specialized ISR aircraft like the Boeing-built RC-135W Rivet Joint. The aircraft has a plethora of equipment that enables its crew to forward gathered information in a variety of formats to a wide range of consumers via Rivet Joint's extensive communication suite. While several of its capabilities remain classified, it is known to possess the technical backbone to support theater and national-level intelligence consumers with near real-time on-scene collection, analysis, and dissemination capabilities. RC-135W is also able to intercept and monitor communications chatter across a wide area and share important pieces of information directly with forces on the ground. Russia has TU-T14R, which is a special mission version of the TU-T14 commercial transport aircraft. It's developed under the code name Project 141. It's configured to carry the MRC-411 multi-intelligence payload, which includes electronic intelligence (ELINT) sensors, side-looking synthetic aperture radar (SAR), and other signals intelligence. SIGINT. But there are only two of these available, and one is reportedly being used in Ukraine, which is not sufficient. Since a large number of precision weapons, like caliber, were rapidly used up, Russia currently is having low stocks. According to Ukrainian Main Intelligence Directorate representative, Russian forces have used more than 80% of their modern missiles. Moscow's troops only have 120 Iskander ballistic missiles left, the representative added. Some of these will be very hard to replenish since certain components used in these, like chips, are foreign, which won't be readily available now due to sanctions. This problem has led Russia to acquire Iranian kamikaze drones which have been used predominantly to hit civilian infrastructure targets. While visuals, like Kyiv falling into darkness, may help with the pressure Putin faces at home, these won't help with achieving real military objectives. Accurate ISR data is crucial to mount an effective military operation, and the lack of this is biting Russia big time in Ukraine. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.